Yo, yeah, what's up, everyone? God bless. Pray you're doing well. Um, I had a conversation with uh, some friends. Uh, has to be about a month ago now. Um, I tried to do a video back then, but just didn't. Um, but talking about, uh, they had a question about rewards and uh, how. They, they use that joke um, that we talk about sometimes about, you know, being a, at least I'll be a garbage man in the, in the kingdom, picking up trash. Um, and they use just in a different way is like, at least I'll be living in a shack because they, they deem themselves, you know, like lazy Christians, basically just not really doing a whole lot, not really serving a lot. Like one of my friends doesn't go to church all that often, maybe like once every other week, the other person goes every week, but then like. I don't know, I guess just her conscience is uh, being attacked, thinking that she's not doing enough, basically, as so many of us have gone through, right? Uh, myself included, for a long time, years, I was feeling like I wasn't doing enough, I wasn't making God proud, um, that I needed to really listen to the Holy Spirit to know where to go and who to pray for also like that's basically mystical legalism going off of sensations and tingly feelings and all this stuff trying to figure out where I'm supposed to am I supposed to make a left here or right here um am I supposed to lay on hands on this person and have them walk up and <laughs> praise the Lord or am I supposed to go over here and pray for this person or am I supposed to blah 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 whatever you know what I'm saying um and mystical legalism, as well as a damaged conscience, um, being attacked and probed, uh, feeling like there is no rest, thinking that there is more to still do, um, even if it's well-intentioned, and I say well-intentioned by even if it's religious flesh saying, yeah, but no, like I'm a Christian now, so I should get out there and I should do these things. Sure. It is good to pray for people. It is good to lift one another up and encourage each other, right? And I went through this a lot with, you know, preaching on YouTube of during the dry seasons, uh, my conscience got wrecked daily. Every time I didn't make a video, my conscience was getting wrecked because it was like, you know, you've got this thing. You should, you could just go speak. You could just, you could just go do this stuff. You know, you're not doing enough. You're not going to get rewarded, blah, 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 all this stuff. Fearing seeing Christ. Although like, of course we know, oh, we're, we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. And when we see him, all fear, all trembling, all pain and um, shame and guilt, it's just going to be permanently gone. So that's something to look forward to. But at the Bema seat, then I'm going to get whipped and judged and yelled at and, um, and scolded that I didn't do enough. And, oh, you missed one of the works I had for you over here. Why didn't you, why weren't you paying attention? As if that's how God speaks to us. As if that is how God talks to us in Christ as sons and heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, He does not speak to us like that. He speaks life and peace to us. He builds us up in the full assurance of faith. He strengthens our inner man as our outer man wastes away, as our our conscience is attacked with fiery darts of the enemy or um, whatever else it may be, weaknesses and trials. As we're getting attacked and feeling, oh, I'm not, I'm useless, I'm not doing enough, I'm worthless, I should just die, things that I have thought for a very long time, uh, and I'm sure many of you have gone through very similar things. He, when those things are happening, he's not saying, oh, yep, uh huh, yeah, you're, yeah, I'm gonna beat you when you get there. When I see you up at the, uh, up at the, uh, the altar, talking about like a wedding, we're all like, he's preparing everything. He's making all the music. He's getting the arrangements. He's, he is our righteousness, our clothing. And then when we get up and, uh, are with him forever. Oh, then he's going to, then he's going to beat us. Then he's going to judge us. Then he's going to scold us. Then he's going to give us the silent treatment and turn the cold shoulder and abuse us. No, the people who say that 
don't know much of God's character. They don't know much of Jesus Christ. Um, and many of us, when we were going through this, did not know much of Jesus Christ and of his gentleness and of his kindness and of his love and mercy and grace towards us. We knew that we had our sins forgiven, but many of us didn't even think all of our sins were forgiven. We thought we still had to repent and show godly sorrow in order to maintain our salvation, Galatian error, or many people use that as their gospel, which is works justification, which is complete heresy and disgusting because it is all about the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. He went to the cross with joy in his heart. Hallelujah. Was bruised, beat, spit on, went up to that cross, paid the debt for all of our sins, shed his precious blood for us. He was buried and he rose again on the third day for our justification. And he gives eternal life to all who believe in him. All who have believed in Jesus Christ have passed from death to life and are no longer condemned. Uh, John 5, 24, I think. Um, and he gives eternal life to all who believe in him. I think that's 647. Many of us just didn't know of the riches of Christ, right? Of how awesome he really is. We just knew that he had died for us. We hadn't really grown in the knowledge of Jesus Christ as he is faithful to do. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the lifter of our head. He builds us He builds us up in the full assurance of faith. We do not build up ourselves through dead works in the flesh thinking it'll please God while still remaining ignorant to the riches of the gospel because we're so busy in our eyes on ourselves and trying to do this and trying to do that to uh, gain something from God, trying to work ourselves into rewards as if we could put God in our debt. No, we cannot. Eyes on ourselves, eyes off of Christ, not growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Oh, but God is faithful, right? Every one of us, every one of us, he doesn't lose a single, single one of us. Hallelujah. He leaves the 99 for the one every time. Thank you, Jesus. So many of us went through Galatian air, went through work sanctification, which is not sanctification at all. It's not grace at all. It's trash. Jesus Christ is our sanctification. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Jesus Christ is our life. We are dead to the law and alive unto God. Where? In the law? No, we're dead to the law. We are alive unto God in Christ. So if we want to enjoy the atmosphere of sonship, if we want to enjoy Christ as life, well, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith. The spirit that worketh miracles among us, did, did it happen by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Galatians chapter 3 and the little first bits of it. It's all by faith. Everything is by faith. Everything is by grace. It's all Jesus Christ as the vine and we are the branches and we lay hold of him. We don't go anywhere. We lay hold of him. We eat and drink of Christ as he ministers himself to us. He is the one who brings forth the fruit from in us, from within us. We do not have to be super worried about it. We also are not here to judge according to the flesh of what men have deemed as good works, which are very often dead works in the flesh because they're in their own strength trying to put God in their debt or just trying to get their reward now which is among men which is flattery and love bombing and all of this stuff and having themselves affected by the people that they're flattering or love bombing or doing these good works under the guise of like good intentions but it's really a ulterior motive of one of, of for selfish reasons and again brothers and sisters we don't have to worry about if we're doing things for a selfish reason or if we're doing it for christ because from my perspective, to simplify it, as soon as I try, try start, words are hard. As soon as I start trying to figure out, which is introspection and looking at myself, if I have a pure intention to do this, I've now taken my eyes off of Christ and the fresh supply of the spirit. And I have now put it on myself. And there's only going to be death and condemnation because I'm going to put myself under the law, trying to measure myself in the flesh to see if it's good or not, which it's not. There is none righteous. No, not one. We have all gone astray. We have, there's, there's not one that's good. No flesh shall be justified by works in the eyes of God. He is just and the justifier of all who believe 
in Jesus Christ. So these, these works that God has ordained for us that we walk in, he causes us to walk in them. What do we do? Brothers and sisters, we walk by faith. We look to him. We look to him, period. And again, I want to reiterate what I was saying uh, just a second ago of we are not to judge what that looks like. Because right now, I'm in like a, uh, I'm in a dry season. I'm going through a lot of stuff and it's unfortunate, <laughs> but at the same time, God is working, right? So, um, uh, what is that? And Peter says, it's not pleasant right now what we go through, but it'll yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness or something like that. You guys know what I'm saying. Um, and so many of us, brothers and sisters are really going through it. A lot of us have health problems and I'm praying for every one of you that, that just the Lord would be your comfort and he would carry you through. And the thing is about with that, I know he's going to answer that prayer because that's just who he is. His word says that he will carry us till the very end. His word says that in our weakness, he will be our strength. He is our strength. His word says that he will not break a bruised reed and he will not blow out a smoking flax. His word says that he is the lifter of our head, the author and the finisher of our faith. Guys, we can take him on his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So during these dry seasons, during these times when it looks like I'm doing absolutely nothing and all I've got is this real, real tiny clinging to Christ and just like, oh Lord, you're faithful. You're going to do it. You're faithful. I don't know what it looks like. You're going to renew me. You're going to restore me. You are faithful. That's all I got. But it's everything. Because in these storms, I don't have hopelessness like the world gives. I don't have get to work to pick yourself up by your bootstraps and carry on, soldier. Come on now. Keep going. No, I've got Christ. I've got living hope. I've got living peace. I've got gentleness and kindness that is not someone who is throwing burdens on me when I'm already weak and down. He's not kicking me when I'm down and out. No, he's like putting my head just like he's doing with all of us, but he's putting our heads in his lap and like combing our hair. I don't have any hair. I shaved my head, so he's not combing my hair, but <laughs> he's patting me on the head <laughs> or he's singing songs of us or he's just whispering in our hearts, right? He's whispering to us. I've got you. He's whispering in our spirit. I've got you. It's okay. I am your shepherd. You hear my voice. I am faithful. I love you. I will take care of you. I am your provider. I am your shield. I am your righteousness. I am your clothing. I am your reward. I am your inheritance. Eyes off of what you might think it should look like according to religious people who are striving in their flesh. Many just vain jangling. Praise God for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God that we have peace through everything. It's not some supernatural, awesome, uh, emotional experience, although it definitely can be. God definitely gives us those gifts of just his, just overwhelming us with his love and, uh, and touching us. And we all have, uh, many of us have had those experiences and they're great, but we don't rely on those feelings, right? We, we walk by faith. Um, but it's just that, that calmness, knowing that Christ is faithful. He has us. Our bodies might be screaming and yanking us one way or another. The world might be, not might be, is very distracting and loud and obnoxious and hideous and disgusting and the way the world is going is just worse and worse. And we know that, but we don't have to freak out about it because we know Lord Jesus, <laughs> he's going to wipe it all clean. Hallelujah. Um, and we're going to be made like him and we're going to see him as he is. We're going to know him as he knows us. And we're going to know him uh, infinitely. Something that we can't even imagine. We're going to be so satisfied we're going to be so lifted up from our lowly place. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. And we are going to be living Christ for eternity, which is newness, no oldness, no introspection, <laughs> no doubt, no worries, no fear, no pain, no sickness. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. That was a big tangent, but again, we don't judge what 
good works look like according to the flesh because of a dry season, right? Because many people who are religious will say, oh, look at you, look at you, you've fallen, and ha, 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 you're not doing anything. You're going to get whipped to the bema seat. Okay, well, you are trying to tear down the body of Christ. That's going to be burned off. If they're saved and they have believed the gospel that Jesus Christ died for their sins, was buried, and rose again, and that is what they believe, according to Scripture, praise the Lord, then they are saved. If they're in Galatian error, if they're just confused, or they're um, a, little, a little prideful, or a little looking down on others, they can still be saved and be like that, and that's unfortunate. We just avoid those people and don't hang out with them. At least I don't. Um, but many times... These people that have this doctrine that is so against the nature and the person of Jesus Christ, uh, many times they have a false gospel. Many times they are works justification um, and or Calvinist or whatever it is, which is, I mean, it's all Antichrist. So if it's not the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone, then it's then it's against Christ. So no thanks. Um but we will suffer outside the camp, but our comfort is of Christ himself as life, as newness of life. Um, and it's something that many of these people, especially, I mean, if they're unsaved, obviously they've never tasted um, the sweetness of Christ. And if they have, if they are saved and they're in Galatian air and they're doing this, well, again, if they got in a cursed gospel, if they're have doctrine that is unsound if they're talking about whippings of the bema seat or that you've got to work your way to sanctification whatever uh yeah mark and avoid they got a false they got a, a, an accursed gospel uh which is a perversion of the gospel right saved by grace through faith but then you got to get to work um and again many times these people just have false gospels so it's a mark and avoid either way um but my friends were were like oh well even if we are living in a shack. Like, it won't matter because there's going to be no fear. There's going to be no greed. There's going to be no envy. So I won't even care if I have a shack and someone else has a mansion. They were taking that mansion verse very literally. Uh, and I explained to them how um, I believe that it means just many rooms, many abodes, and he abides in us. And we are his house. And he's preparing us. And he's going to... Um, we're going to be living Christ for eternity uh, and we are the house of God, right? Um, there could be multiple meanings, obviously, but um, I don't think it's literal mansions and then people who don't do enough good works have shacks. But it's funny because even in their own misunderstanding of that scripture, but knowing knowing the real gospel, because these, uh, these two friends, they are saved, um, but just very confused and just like don't know a lot of the meat of the word. Um or like the the riches of Christ, they kind of just like are on the gospel, think it's just the ticket to heaven, and then like they should go do good stuff. So that was their argument to me. Uh, it's like we should go do stuff, and we don't, and we're not doing any good works. Look at all these pastors and these really and these ministers out there doing good stuff. And I was like, all right, well, like you got to understand uh, that we don't judge those things according to the flesh, because many of those people could be operating from a place of fear and operating from a place of trying to put God in their debt. Then those are going to be dead works. Um, rather than just a just a free sharing of Christ. It's hard to explain in simple words like this, but I think you guys get what I'm saying. Um, and even their misunderstanding of that scripture, they were still on point with their understanding of the love of God and how awesome it's going to be and that there's going to be no greed, there's going to be no envy, so they wouldn't even care. So like they could still have joy now and not really be worried about if they didn't have a giant mansion and they had a shack because they, they knew it was going to be so good when they saw him, right? Um, and I explained that, you know, like you don't have to worry about that. That's not the way it's going to be. Um, and it was just nice to see that <laughs> the Lord is working in all of us um, and we're all at different, we're all at different points and different understandings and different levels of maturity and the full assurance of faith and uh, understanding the riches of the gospel and what Christ really did for us and who he is in us, the life of Christ. Um, but there is absolutely no whipping post at the Bema seat 
I consider it, as I have grown in this understanding, I consider it an absolute joy that every one of my dead works, where I was operating from a place of fear, or I was like, I better go out and do something so God will reward me, whatever it was, every dead work, every wood, hay, and stubble is going to be burned off. I don't want to bring myself. Myself sucks. <laughs> I don't want to bring me. I want Jesus. I want 100% of Jesus to be there, and I want to be made 100% like Jesus when we are given glorified bodies, right? And I'm sure we all do. So when people try to turn that and invert the scripture to turn it into a, a, a whipping post and a piece of fear and condemnation, those people are evil workers to me. And you can maybe some of them are confused, but still like, but still save. But I don't know, man, because that just to me seems evil. If you're going to tell me that my bridegroom, when I get there, after carrying me all the way till the end, right before we're about to enter into eternity, or maybe the moment we have all simultaneously, I don't know, then he's going to beat me and scold me. Brad, I'm not going to listen to you. Go away. Shut your face and leave me alone. I'm going to go to the scripture. I'm going to go to Christ as a person, as a living person, as my life. And I'm going to say, you know what? I bet you have the best for me. I bet we're going to be singing and dancing and rejoicing as all of the flesh, as all of the dead works, as all of the striving, all of the fear and all of the trying to gain something because I was afraid is going to be burned off. And I'm going to be left with everything of Christ, of joy and confidence and boldness and singing and dancing and rejoicing. I'd rather have that. So you can, these people can take their, their evil interpretation of scripture and they can shove it uh, because <laughs> that's not who God is. Uh, Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He's our life. He is our clothing. He's fashioning the entrance, brothers and sisters. He is setting up the feast table, the music, the lighting, the everything. He's doing it all. Um, and I bet you there's going to be a sweet dance floor for us who want to dance. I bet you there's going to be a really nice place for people to sing. For those who want to sing, I can't sing, so I know I'm not going to be up there singing. Um, everyone's going to be looking at me like I'm off key, but we'll all laugh about it because it'll all be nice. <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm just fooling around. Um, we can't even imagine how good it's going to be, but my little tiny pea brain is like, oh, it's going to be so good. So I joke about it, uh, but it is going to be um, absolutely amazing. So brothers and sisters, don't worry. Um, preaching to myself as well. Don't worry about getting out there and doing a bunch of good works. No, just rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ and Christ will pour himself out of each of us. The fruit will come because we're the branch. We're the branch abiding on the vine, chilling on the vine. The vine feeds us, the fruit comes out, but the branch doesn't actually get up and move around. The vine does. Life does its thing. Life does its thing. We don't have life and then tell life how to operate. No, we have life and we just enjoy it. And there's not a demand to enjoy it either because there are many, many times where I've just been angry and I've been salty. The saltiest of the earth is my nickname in heaven. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, where I've been just angry and irritated and salty and fearful um, and I've been angry with God and I've been like, yo, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Come on. And then I think about, oh, well, I should be grateful. I should be enjoying this. And it just makes me more mad because I'm putting a burden on myself that I have to enjoy him and I have to be grateful and I shouldn't be complaining and blah, blah, blah. And then that turns around and makes, like I said, makes me irritated to eventually, I don't know, eventually I just like zone out and space out for a bit, whatever. And then I'm like, man, Thank you that in my weakness, there's no demand to even enjoy you. There's no demand to eat when I just like can't bring myself to to eat. Or it's not even that I can't bring myself to eat, man. I'm just like trusting Christ and the timing at which he does everything. Like there's no, there, there's no demand on me. I Oh, you better be grateful. No, that's going to make me irritated. Go away. And I irritate myself by saying that. Or the enemy coming in and trying to lay on some accusations at the same time. And I'm just like, Oh my Lord, thank you that you have mercy and grace upon me. Even when I'm irritated and angry with you, but then I'm going to thank you about all your goodness later. 
So I blame you for everything, but then I thank you for everything. So and overall, it's fine. <laughs> and it's going to be all right because you're the author and finisher of my faith and you're the lifter of my head. And it's all going to be A-OK. And that's like the best I can do. Just like <laughs> it's the best I can do sometimes to fake it till I make it. But we know it's true, right? It just is not changing my – sometimes it doesn't change my current state of being and how I feel and all the emotions that are – going around or how irritated I am or how much my body hurts from injuries and blah, blah, blah. But we know it's true. We say yes and amen. And then don't judge it. Don't judge what that looks like, man. Uh, or lady. Uh, yeah. Uh, so there's no Bema seat. Uh, I mean, no Bema seat, uh, beating is what I mean. Yes, there's a Bema seat. There's, uh, there's a Bema seat. (laughs) There's no beating at the Bema. Um, and, justification is not just our ticket to heaven. All right. Justification is our ability to boldly stand before God at any moment, no matter what, as sons and heirs, hallelujah, rejoice in spirit and in truth, worship God in spirit and in truth. doesn't matter if I just punch someone in the face, if I just stole a bunch of money from, from a bank and got arrested, I could be in the cop car getting arrested, being like, oh Lord, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I'd probably be irritated and laughing at myself and be like, oh man, well guess what? You're gracious and you're merciful and you're going to work this out for my good. And I bet you, I'm, I really don't want to go into that situation, but anyone who's like, you know, people who are in jail, who are still believers, I bet you Christ is feeding them and nurturing them as his body. Because that's how faithful he is. He works out everything for the good of his children. And that's us. So it doesn't matter what the situation, where you are, when you are, what it looks like. He'll work it out for your good. Uh, We're on a battlefield. And the battle be raging. But we have the absolute perfect armor, Christ himself. We have the absolute perfect weapon, Christ himself as the word. Oh, Oh, man. Brothers and sisters, the devil, the enemy, absolutely defeated, demolished, obliterated. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. Uh, Man, the enemy's already defeated. He's under the feet of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, And we can, we can, we can. We can have hope. We can have boldness and confidence before God. Don't let anyone try to take that away from you uh, through their works reward, work sanctification, mystical legalism, their quote unquote this and that. Whatever doctrine gets your eyes off of Christ and onto yourself, even if you don't fully understand the intricacies of it, I'd say ignore it. If it takes your eyes off of Christ and puts your eyes on yourself, ignore it and just hang out with Jesus. <laughs> Uh, cause we're going to be hanging out with Jesus for eternity. So I'd rather get to know him now rather than get to know what everyone's pet doctrine of, uh, garbage is. Um, it's too much noise. Um, thank God for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Um, and how beautifully and uniquely he has made each and every one of us as his body and how he builds us up in the faith. All right. I have to cut this before half an hour. Otherwise I can't upload it because I'm using a free version of a video capture app. I don't want to pay for the $5 if I don't use it very often, (laughs) but maybe I should. Uh, But anyways, uh, that's it for now. Uh, God bless. I hope there's something here that encourages you guys um, and uh, appreciate myself while I'm sitting over here in traffic. Uh, Yeah, praying for every one of you that you just have uh, peace and comfort in Christ and are built up in the full assurance of faith and just have just wonderful boldness and confidence in Christ um, and can just stand before God confidently and rejoice, brothers and sisters. All right. God bless. Take care.